cams are off. And that should be it. So what would you want to do this again? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all are listening <laughs> to the Everson We're back. Connection Podcast. <laughs> uh, for those of you in the chat right now, we uh, apparently had some blue screen happening on uh, our streaming computer. So, of course, it killed the entire feed. So apologies for those of you that uh, were expecting a smooth show. We thought we had everything lined up. We thought we were good to go. Things happen. It's okay. Uh, so we were uh, actually just in the midst of saying happy birthday to David Naylor. Uh, I think we were getting ready to do some story time. So I think that's about where we should just start it up. Robin, uh, are we good on sound effects at least? I'm not sure. Try and hear if you hear this. Everyone here loves story time, our favorite time of the day. Yes, we would absolutely yes. heard that. Dude, I'm going it quiet. is our favorite time of the day. And I'm going a little quiet. So you shut away and I'll join in, okay? <laughs> That, that works. That works. Uh, all right. Uh, let's talk story time. Uh, I will kick this off. Uh, we, we had some pre-Halloween stuff going on. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, we went out and did a little trunk or treating. That's what they call it out here. Uh, I don't know if uh, you guys have this over on your, your side of it, Nicole or Gary. But uh, yeah. basically, yeah, some church organizations sometimes do it or um, sometimes they have kind of a, the mall might do it where basically people have all their cars in a parking lot where you can go and just kind of trick or treat to all the cars. Um, and so uh, we did that with our son yesterday. We had him dressed up as a pirate. My wife and I were dressed up as pirates and we had his, uh, his wheelchair decked out like a pirate ship. Uh, so it was, it was a really fun day. Lots of, lots of good people, uh, just taking part and having fun, doing a little Halloween love. Um, I, I can't imagine Halloween hasn't really caught on yet in the UK, has it, Bill? No, no. Um, it's I mean, supermarkets and shops have things for Halloween, and we get pestered by some usually teenage kids trying their luck, knocking on the doors. You know, four days before and four days afterwards, saying trick or treat. Um, and um, yeah, we usually, to be honest, we're we're a bit. Um, Party poopers, in that sense, we we just you know pretend we're not in, because it's not it's not the same as in as in the US. I mean, seeing the photos of of your costumes, Greg, they're absolutely amazing. I have to say, absolutely superb. And we do nothing like that over here. See, this is where I I think if you guys could bring out your air, inner characters and have a little fun with it, you might you might embrace Halloween better. I think that's we, the key to Halloween. We get arrested. <laughs> The thing I don't I've been, think, though, is it's a Celtic holiday. Yeah, All Hallows bigger. Eve, yeah, but it's a it's a you know it's a greetings card. It's a it's a um, a commercial event, but that's right. how it's seen in the in the UK. It's been turned into a commercial event, just like Valentine's, just like um, all the others. You know, thank, Thanksgiving, all that sort of rubbish. Well, you don't have to buy uh, cards for this one, so <laughs> yeah, we don't yeah, buy it, cards. It, yeah, it, it, it is a commercial event. Don't get me wrong. It, it definitely still is, uh, you know, a, a, a big time commercial event for the candy industry more than anything, I think, uh, uh, on our yeah. end. Unlike unlike Valentine's Day, which became kind of a hallmark holiday. Uh, this is uh, su- sponsored by Mars, uh, Mars Bars. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, it's, I, I think some some people don't get me wrong. Some people do, you know, get into the spirit of it. And there's lots of parties and things. But nothing on the scale of uh, of what at least what we see on the TV uh, right. that happens and takes place in the US. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Gary, what about you? Do you guys get a lot of uh, trick or treaters in your neck of the woods? My neighborhood is packed with trick or treaters, and a lot of people come from the town into our neighborhood. So my street will be completely b- filled with children um, by probably I guess three thirty four. So. It's pretty cool. I'm not. I'm working, and we actually have a party that night usually as well, which is very okay. nice. I actually bought the uh, lime so I could make my margaritas on Halloween night, and uh, I think we're also going to make some dirty martinis. And the kids are old enough now where we don't have to trick or treat with them anymore. They're in middle nice. school, my youngest. Yeah. So they're going to go off, and the parents will stay here. We'll just um, drink stuff, and when they come back, we'll we'll feed them 
something other than candy, maybe. Okay. It's pretty good. All right. I'm looking forward to it. We just put in our catering order for the day. Gosh. <laughs> okay. Well, we had a Halloween party here last night, and we did our usual thing of, of um, laying out the big table, and Judith makes this, this bloke, you know, trousers, clothes, head, and then she cuts... She cuts holes in the shirt where the where the muscles are, and on your legs, okay. and she puts trays in those, and as if it's the body exposed and the intestines, so it's as if the body is ripped apart. And she puts ribs where the ribs are, and then okay, and all meat right. and chicken nuggets, and and she all it's all over. So you everybody comes like a buffet, and you eat out of the man on the table, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, we have, so disturbing we and cool all in the same breath yeah, yeah, so we have a bit of fun. yeah so but yeah it's, it's not as big yeah and it's it's funny when i was a kid we used to go up to the doors and um go uh um halloween is coming and the goose is getting fat with your penis put a penny on the old man's hat and there's this wee song that we sang and now the american thing is they come to the door and go check or treat i mean well, what is that but wait we have we have that song, Robin, for the, um, uh, bonfire night. Right. Okay. That song's for bonfire night, but obviously oh. bonfire night over here was all about burning the Catholics. Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily um, probably hasn't take, taken off. For the off record, in as, as somebody who was baptized Catholic, I don't think I endorse this. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's, well, it's, it's <laughs> true. It's, <laughs> Guy, Guy Fawkes was was part of the Catholic plot to over, overthrow the uh, overthrow Parliament. No, so uh, wait, wait. I mean, I was I was brought up Catholic as well, and we were taught about it. You know how it was wrong to celebrate uh, Guy Fawkes being burned. No, so. we would do a bit of that. that on, that's on bad. The 11th of July. So <laughs> that would be ours. <laughs> um, and it's definitely about burning Catholics, even though yeah. it's meant to commemorate something else altogether. But, um, yeah, what do you do? <laughs> uh, Nicole, what about you? How's how's Halloween out in your neck of the woods? Um, sometimes we put a fire pit in the front of the yard, like in the driveway. You know those mobile ones that you can carry around? Right, Everybody right. sits around, like the whole neighborhood will get together and sit around. The parents will sit around and hand out ca- cough, uh, candy together <laughs> and right. make drinks and hang out. And we party outside because it's right. warm enough for us still. And the kids just trick or treat on by, and it's like, hey, my house is over there. Go get candy, or they'll be like, um, hey, you know, my candy's right here, whatever. So, and then the, all the kids, the dads take the kids, and then they just walk around with the dads. And the moms okay. sit and party. <laughs> right. I was hoping for a moment you were going to say we had a, a, a bonfire pit out in front so we could burn the Catholics. That would have actually <laughs> made this whole thing come full circle. Yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, all right. So, I got burned last year. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, all right. So Halloween uh, embraced by most, actually, it seems like, outside of uh, Phil, who just wants to – see, Phil, here's the thing, though, by the way. Uh, and, Robin, you can take this into consideration, too. Yeah. Uh, moving forward, when, when the kids do the trick or treat and they say trick or treat, you've got options at that point. I'm just saying, you've got options. What, you can like, uh, give you, them a treat. Yeah, attack them. Yeah, or you can throw rotten eggs. I'm just saying, you know. I value have, my house. I'd, I'd be uh, left through burning embers. <laughs> yeah, fair See, enough. Kids, kids these days are a little vindictive. Yeah. As, as, uh, we, as we do live out in the countryside and down a dark lane, we don't get too many kids out here. They're very, very brave if they do. Um, so, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. What do you do? Well, especially after they hear about you guys eating the intestines of some poor guy for your dinner. <laughs> Tell you what I did on Friday night. Let's hear about it. I went did to you see... did you attend uh, a um, middle age get together? <laughs> yes, I think that that's that's being nice. By the way. Oh goodness, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Yeah, there was a funny. Uh, and you know what? So what we're laughing about here is I went to an ELO concert uh, on Friday evening and I've had a uh, friend of mine who was an undertaker, by the way, um, had the tickets for me for a long time. And um, when you when you I took a photograph of the hall, which was completely and utterly packed to the rafters. But um, the majority of people were of my age and older and there was shiny heads everywhere. 
and <laughs> Greg heads said and yeah look at all those bald people <laughs> and Judith funny enough said exactly the same thing um so yeah yeah but that aside you know all the milfs and even when i said there was milfs yeah there were grilfs um yeah. uh, uh, that aside the concert was absolutely fantastic it was really 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 good and uh had an absolute ball at it uh, jeff lynn and elo a lot of the old numbers a lot of new numbers traveling wilbury stuff just it was just brilliant it was a really happy night we were all dancing in the aisles dancing in the seat and i hadn't seen these guys for about 25 30 years or spent socialized with them so there was my mate and his sister and his brother and we used to knock about as kids so we had an airbnb place and uh okay uh we went back there we got some food afterwards went back got some beers i had brought a bottle sorry phil i brought your bottle of feckin whiskey and we drank a out. complete bottle of feckin whiskey and quite a few beers and we had quite a few at the venue and after to pub back afterwards and i think we i was going to bed about half four on saturday morning and i ain't used to that <laughs> no <laughs> not, not used to that any longer um but so it was a great night great night's fun uh and uh elo you have to go and see them if you ever get the chance i think that my attitude now is with all of these big super bands that used to be we gotta go and see them uh while we can don't miss them don't miss out don't let them die on you without seeing them so um gunslinger hello you're in the chats we're back up again and we have cams of some shape or form so um yeah phew done on the fly <laughs> um, anyway. oh the fun right uh all right so elo that you know it sounds like it was a good concert it sounds like you had a, an opportune time to catch up with uh, some of your 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 friends that you mm. haven't partied with in quite a while so that's nice mm. that is nice uh, i i do love the fact that now the story is even more enhanced by the fact that the guy you went to this concert with was an undertaker yeah. and the fact that everybody in the crowd from that that picture shot you you showed me uh, was well on their way to needing his services. Yes, he had his measuring yeah. tape out, you know, and uh, he was measuring people <laughs> just, a lot of bots. It just you know, comes with a business it, card. Definitely. He should have just <laughs> passed it out the entire time. <laughs> uh, oh, dear, dear, dear. All right. Uh, you're welcome, Robin. You're welcome. Uh, Nicole, anything you wanted to talk about from this past week? Uh, just been a busy week. Um, doctor's appointments, vet appointments. Yeah. Apparently, my dog is allergic to something because she keeps chewing on her little paws, and there. So, <clears throat> nothing. I mean, it's just been a week. <laughs> been a week. No, I hear you yeah, there. Regular, I hear you there. normal, everyday, busy week. Yeah. How's the new job going? It's going good. It's really going good. Um, today we um, so we have this event called the Maverick Mile where we the kids run. They try and get donations and run the mile, and then people pay the donations in for the mile they've run. They've run, not run. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Nicole is tired. Nicole was sniffing paint today because I painted that hill because we put our our logo on the hill, and right. then um, I put I painted these columns on either side because that's part of our school. Uh, uh, Logo. Char it's character traits, and okay. we use these character traits, uh, and that's the six pillars of character. And we, I have, but I just blended them all together. Anyway, so I spent two hours sniffing paint before I came here, <laughs> which is why my hair is still wet because I took a shower and came on here, and Ra Robin broke shit, and my hair is still wet, and I, because I was scrubbing, like I have a sore little finger. This hurts. Scrub I have an <laughs> Oh. I have spray paint still that I cannot get off of my hands, but I came flying in here ready to go. So I'm here, full of paint. Or you, you high on paint, paint fumes. You're good to go. God, I hope not. I'm, I am getting a headache though, but it was really windy out there. So, well, you know, the easiest way to get rid of that headache is just whip out a can of spray paint and just kind of aerosol up a little bit, and you're good. No, thank you. <laughs> 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 Uh, all right, last hey, hey, but certainly. Oh, no, no, not, not least. nice. No, I've got one, one extra thing. One extra. What do you see? The see. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? For uh, uh, my new my newest purchase arrived, and I've had a ball with it. Um, 
I'm I sorry, you're, I'm sorry, back up, back it up a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, <laughs> so, your, your, your newest purchase uh, well, it's not really, came in, correct? No, it's not maybe the, it's one of my purchases. Um, yeah, Okay. so it's a, so I bought a Sony Walkman. All right, moving on. Gary, let's talk about you. That's brilliant. <laughs> There's something really quaint about putting a cassette into a Sony Walkman and listening to it. I, I give it to my kids and they had no idea how to put the cassette in. Did they, does it go, right. you know, what, upside down or which way does it go? And, and you know what? When you, when you listen to it, you, there, there was a hiss when we listened to cassettes, a little hiss in between tracks. And you forget all this with right. a good quality of CDs and MP3s. And there was just something really quaint about listening to an album one side and having to tur- and then it clicked off and having to turn it over. The, the, I don't know. Maybe I'm just turning it. Reminds it, you, it, it, re- it reminds you of your youth, certainly. The quality of an album, a music album, not just going from track to track to track. The development of an album is just, just lovely. So, yes, Sony Walkman. It's the future. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Robin on this because I actually, for last Christmas, finally got another record player because I wanted to play my records again. Because mm. I like so- that popping and hissing i missed all that yeah. so i just and my kids crazy enough my kids are very good kids and like elvis and paul Anka and we had to get the guardians of the galaxy stuff you just said paul Anka, didn't you i did all right okay Polenka. that's a hungarian they love old drink. classic music there's nothing wrong with that i think it's there, awesome there's nothing wrong with that age. There's nothing wrong with that. I just haven't heard the name Paul Anka. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's right up with Neil Sadaka. It's funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sarah said in the chat, yes, having to rewind and guessing what spot you're at. Yes, you forgot all that. All right, you know, having to rewind. Is it, is it going fast? Do these arrows here, do they mean it's going forward or, or backwards? I'm not quite sure. Let's go and keep going. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's been a lovely experience. Uh, and I suppose it's a nice collector's piece. Now, one thing that I got with it was I bought the Guardian. I, I bought off eBay some cassettes, so I bought about ten okay. cassettes for a fiver, right? But I I went to <laughs> I, I went to Amazon and I bought Guardians of the Galaxy, the the tip uh, from the movie that they have, and it comes with the handwritten case and the uh, uh, the little cassette with it handwritten on and all the tracks are on it. And it's Brill, so it has a soundtrack on it, and it's that's just something nice about that too. So, yeah, good We've bit of We've got one and two. Good bit Robin. of marketing. We've got one nope. and two. Nice bit of nice bit of marketing. Just 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 waiting for the day, and it will be coming very soon, Robin. You'll be playing your little cassette player, and you're going to be loving the sound. And you're going to be beep bopping your head <laughs> along. And, yep, <laughs> you're going to hear this, <laughs> and yeah, your don't. tape is going to just get yeah. eaten. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to pencil uh, it and rewind it then. Or yep, barrel, yep. yeah, big pen, a big pen, yeah, yeah. So sorry, yeah. Uh, I went off on my, you know, the way you wind me up and set me off. I, I did that again. Right, yeah. that's okay. That's all right. Somebody uh, him. All right, uh, Gary. We're, we're now Yo. we are going to shift gears over to you, Gary D. Felice. I just got to say, sure. yeah, I, I cassettes, yeah, nice memory, but I, I really love my my MP3 players and digital stuff. It is so easy. <laughs> And my Spotify. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. I still love that. I'm not saying that's bad. I wonder if my kids will, will say, wow, Dad, look at this old MP3 player I got one day. Uh, yeah, of course they will. The next thing. Well, again, we're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. If you're watching it, it's the <laughs> second one uh, at, towards the end of it when he's lost his, his cassette player. Oh, that's guy, right. I don't think I saw the goes, second one, but you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Here, here, look, this is the thing back on Earth. It holds 300 <laughs> songs. It's called a Zune. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh, a- let me tell you <laughs> mp3 players are already getting outdated yeah, they are. i mean you don't need an mp3 only player you have your phone now you've yes, got your tablet phone. so yeah. uh yeah and and yeah we found so, illegal napster and things like spotify and such for the record i have a zoom still you do <laughs> break that sucker out i want to see that keep thing. it keep it keep it you should give it away maybe for uh, extra life i have an ipod I got it somewhere in this drawer, but like yes, I'll, I'll break it out. Heavy you, old school you keep iPod. that thing in your drawer. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Speaking of keeping things in the drawer, let's talk about uh, you, Gary. Um, we, we brought you off the shelf. Finally. It's like a uh, monthly thing podcast. now. It's, a bit, yeah. it's hard to get here every week or every other week. It, it's This is it. This is why. 
kids sports. Keep, I'll keep you guys updated on that because I'm sure everybody's really excited to hear. Daughter soccer team, so she's 12, playing U13 this year. They're doing great in soccer. We went up to a tournament in Connecticut about uh, Columbus Day weekend, so what was it, about two, three weeks ago? And we beat a whole bunch of select and, and like, actual, like, big teams, not just, we're just a little town team. And we went up, beat, beat them all, took first place, so they're doing good. My boys' soccer team in high school, he's on JV this year. They went undefeated last year. His two years of middle school, they were undefeated except one loss. And then this year, they lost their first game a couple of weeks ago, finished out the season with wins. So they lost one. The boys' varsity team, by the way, if you look USA Today up for top high schools, boys' varsity, number three in the country. All right. So okay. he'll be playing with them next year. That's pretty cool. Um, and actually, we're going to see the girls' varsity. They're in the county finals on Tuesday. Okay. So I'm taking my girls' soccer team to see that. And then my boys' football team. He had a pick today. You saw that? It got called back right. for roughing the passer. <laughs> Doesn't count when your the rest of your teammates are cheating, trying to hurt the other quarterback. Here, we here. did. Sorry, did we got caught? Um, it's okay. Apparently, I we just, just found out they made. We lost today, and we actually still made the playoffs. All so, right. they they played the number one seed next week. That will be a loss. We'll get destroyed, <laughs> but <laughs> they'll be there. It'll be a good right. experience for them. And um, I thought I was gonna have my first extra life with no sporting events ever. And I'm guessing we'll have a football game on Saturday. So I'll disappear from the camera for a few hours while we go watch that. All right. You've so, been a good father. You've been uh, a good father. It's, that's I why would, we do this. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, apparently you got some snow. No, we did not get snow. We had a little nor'easter storm. So those are some massive storms that come up the coast. I guess it was a hurricane, right, that hit Southern Cal or maybe Mexico or something kind of reorganized yeah. and then zipped up the coast and we get dumped on with like, you know, 50 mile an hour winds and three inches of rain. They come. Um, so it was a really shitty day yesterday. So I finally got around to watch two movies I wanted to watch. We watched Spider-Man Homecoming, which was really good. And everybody kept saying it was good. Um, I had no good. idea what direction they were going to yeah, go. Good I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize they were tying in the whole Tony Starks and the Iron Man and all that. That was pretty cool. Um, I really liked the way they did the show, the uh, the movie. That was good. Right. And then I finally, since it was Halloween, I'm a huge Stephen King fan, uh, and I watched the new version of it from what was that? I, was it the beginning of the year or last last year? Is uh, beginning of this year, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, beginning of this year. It was good. I liked it. It was spooky. My it scared my wife. She, she never read the books, and it it. I think I read the book it probably 30 years ago. It was like one of my first. Yeah books that I read that I wanted to read, not something the school wanted me to read. Um, so my memory of it was kind of sketchy, um, but I, I could definitely see elements that I would recall a little bit from the book. Yeah, I, I remember that was the first book I ever read that was over a thousand pages. <laughs> Do you I remember getting I, that I, I, Yeah, oh God, I'd love that thing. But uh, I, I remember reading it over a weekend, like I could not put it down. It was a, just a great book. Um, yeah. I don't know the movie did it total justice, but the movie wasn't bad. It was pretty right. good. I didn't mm. love – I know the clown was really freaky, but I don't know. I didn't like – they kind of made him a little silly-ish to me. There was, there was a night I, 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 I think I tried to watch Scream, and, and I, I, uh, I, I, um, I didn't get past the, 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 the first killing. Just about, yeah, the, the girl died and the boyfriend died and – yeah, I, I couldn't watch it any longer. I had to turn it off. You didn't I think like that's it, or every, by the way, how every slasher movie starts off with the girl and the boy that are making out die. I just I they're always the first ones to go. No, it, it just, was I thought it, fabulous. It really, 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 really annoyed me because he was so rude on the phone and his phone manner was terrible, and uh, <laughs> I just I couldn't watch something with something with some of his manners just as bad as that. So, yeah, no, me no, and the right, movies well, don't go. Mm -hmm. no. We got Nightmare on Elm Street lined up for maybe tonight. My son has not seen that yet, so we want to get him. That's, Freddy Krueger was my favorite slasher from the '80s. I'll be curious yeah. to hear how that holds up. Yeah, he watched Halloween the other day. Um, he thought it was good. The new yeah. Halloween comes out is out now, isn't it? It's yeah. out. Yeah, it should be out yeah, now. Yeah, it is out now. I want to see that one. Yeah, my yeah. wife wants to see that too, so I might try to get to the theater on that. Yeah, that that might be that might be one we try to go see as well. Mm. Uh, all right. 
let's move on. Let's talk about video games because that's actually what this podcast is about. It's about Today video games. I feel like playing computer games. Today I feel like playing computer games. Hmm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, all right. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the, I'm going to say peripheral games, because there's one big game we're going to be talking a lot about. Uh, so uh, why don't we start with Gary? Uh, we'll start with your games you've been playing. I think Phil could chime in on one of those particular games, uh, and, and Robin also, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, the, the main game I've been playing, actually, I'll hit the other one first. I, I'm Feeling out to see what I want to play in Extra Life is my single player game of choice. And and Webster had spoken so highly about Batman Arkham Knight that I, I threw good. that in and I played a, about probably about an hour on Saturday morning. And that seems very good. So that might be the game I go with. I'm, I'm trying to avoid buying a new one like Red Dead Redemption, which you guys are all playing. I'm, I'm guessing we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, because I have all these freaking games in my backlog and I could really sit down and just jump in on one. So I tried that out real quick. Um, but the game I've been playing and I love, and I didn't know, I mean, I knew I'd like it, but I'm really enjoying it is Forza Horizon 4. Yeah. Who, who would have thunk it? Yeah. Who would have thunk it? Uh, is this your first Forza Horizon game? No, I played, I played, I've played other Horizons. I can't remember which ones. So that's why I thought, I'm like, you know, I know it, but. It, I, I think the the uh, the ability to jump in and just go do a race real quick, you know, take ten minutes, fifteen minutes out, because I mean, you can hear the dog barking here. My life is fucking crazy here. So between that and if you know, I can get in and play for an hour, it's fun to just jump around. In, you know, I don't know how to play it yet. I sent out a message. I wasn't sure what to do with the credits I'm getting. Do I buy cars? Do I not buy cars? But I'm just having fun. I grab my Jeep, which I have a Jeep myself. And nice. I've been doing a lot of dirt races with the Jeep. Um, it's it's fun. I'm really enjoying it. The bars are harder to find this time, though, I think. Yeah, I mean, one thing you can do is you can buy the treasure map. for. I um, saw that. Yeah. It's yeah. money, yeah. though, right? Yeah, yeah shut up. No, shut wait, up. Do, okay, okay, Gary, forget that. Don't give them more money. I know it's, <laughs> I know it's only a couple of bucks. I'm not. All right. So, I clicked on the button. It so, said pay for it. I'm like, cancel out. No, no. Nope. So we'll do that later on. Get the most of them yourself. Okay. You know, manage that. Um, but once you get the barn find thing, go into the purple circle and press the start button and go into drone mode. Okay. Oh, I love the And if you that. go into drone mode, you can whiz around really quickly, zip, zip, zip past the circle. And when you find the little barn, and they all look the same, it will put a little marker where that barn is. So then you oh. exit drone mode back into your car and zip to the little marker that's that's uh, the way to do that. brilliant yes i'm so glad your that's, video that's video. a good little uh little cheat there robin yeah. that's that's a that's so, a brilliant so, recommendation so certainly buy the map but way down the line now i know phil you were using it to get your xp up really quickly and yeah it's commendable but it doesn't take that much time. <laughs> it doesn't take that long anyway that was a nice fuck you wasn't it yeah, yeah. It was. <laughs> that yeah. was commendable hey, it, back, it doesn't yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take that long especially if you have one of the uh, Forza Special cars mm. so oh, I yeah, won yeah, yeah. A, um, a Land Rover Forza Special and it's faster than most of the cars in the uh, in the garage it, it's virtually indestructible mm. and has something like triple the point score so I'm just racing around with that and my level's going up massively Wow. Um, and the, few, the, the short time I've got to play it at the moment, because uh, of other things, I've been away and there's another game on the, the uh, that's landed. But um, yeah, that's the way I've been doing it. Yeah. Forza Horizon 4 is just great fun. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Brilliant. I mean, I, my, my, I have the VW Camper. And that's, that was my special car. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> it's like the super ridiculous speed and catches yeah. people out. So uh, yeah, so that's that's cool. Now, um, sadly, and I apologise, everybody. Uh, this week has been a bit crazy, and life got in the way, and I couldn't do a break. I had to send out a breaker breaker one nine for a copy because Wednesday night I just life got in the way, and I could not get to play on Wednesday evening. So I'm, I apologise. So I hope you all joined in anyway and and had a game or two because it's great crack in a party. You know that's that was a lot of fun is as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it's my, my I, understanding hmm. is the. 
the caravan did uh, did continue on. I, I do believe that there were plenty good, of people uh, good. racing around. The caravan, yes, the one that's making its way from Honduras at the yeah. moment. Yeah, uh, yeah, up up from Mexico yeah. now. <laughs> yep, Fun, funded by Playground Games, obviously, <laughs> no one else. Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so it's lots uh, of fun. Yeah, and unfortunately, this week again, the the, the other the, the elephant in the room. I I have had it installed. And I haven't even fired it up once. Um, so what's going to happen Shame. with... Yeah, no, I know. It's just, it's just been crazy. Well, well, with the concert and stuff I got there and other stuff going on. But I would say Forza Horizon is always... I'm going to be playing this for, for uh, a year or two yet. So I'm going to keep... Yeah. And it's one of those things yeah. you can dip in and out of very, very easily. And, and yeah, I love yes, that. Yes, yeah. It, yeah. Out of all the games out right now, like Forza Horizon 4 to me is the easiest to jump in and out from. You're not going to feel like you're lost, or you're, you know, you're, you're missing a plot point. The the plot is very straightforward, uh, and and so I'm still um, annoyed about the gonna... houses and stuff. But I'm still annoyed that I can't do more with the houses apart from open a fast travel location up. I I would. That's love... all that is really, right? Yeah. I'd love to go in there and be able to look at all my clothes in a wardrobe. I'd like to have a shoe room. A hat room uh, not, where I put all my GTA. all my skirts, uh, a dance studio so I can practice all my moves, and then maybe a garage for my cars. But it, you know, in fairness, it is a little surprising they don't have some little like room that you could go into to check out your dance moves, since that is something that they've brought into this yeah, game. I won't do that. Um, I yeah. want to swing my pants. But it is the most inopportune and unnecessary things when you're. And there's a, a nice panoramic view of the my beautiful, pants. beautiful British countryside, and then right. there's my avatar and its wellies <laughs> and its shiny coat doing, doing the floss. Some sort of, yeah, doing the floss. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. inappropriate. Like my image. <laughs> uh, if anybody is around next Saturday that plays for us, look me up because I will probably be doing that a lot for an extra life. Cool. Yeah, it's going to be superb. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's see. So from Gary, we will move over to Nicole. Yes, sir. Hi. Let's Hi. talk about what you've been playing. You you have found a new crack addiction. I have. Rise of Civilizations, Civilizations is very, very, very addictive. Sarah and I actually talked about that a little bit. She's like, I'm afraid I'm getting a little addicted. And I'm like, yeah, me too. Because yeah. I actually have three characters. Uh, three. Look, he's laughing. Three. Three. Yeah, three. three characters. Phil, three. What I, could, I can only just manage one. Why? Why would you need three characters? And help me. I'm honest question. What? Why? Okay, so, like, you know how Phil had started um, the Overseas Connection podcast Alliance, and I right. had a character in there, but the okay. only character that was which I had already had another one just because I was messing around. And because okay. they gave you, I, I just wanted, I just wanted an extra person just to play with. And so when um, BU3 had, we were having co talks with them about joining as their sister alliance, um, they re requested that we have a big person over there so that when it was time, to go to war with um, CA1, there would be someone over there that, you know, to go back and forth with. Well, that person was me. <laughs> okay. So I had the biggest stuff. I, I'm like over one mil now on that character. Okay. And one million so, power. So, 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 okay. So this is just me not understanding. So I'm assuming your character, you, you can't just kind of take your character anywhere you want within the world of rise of civilizations. Like it, it, if you are in an alliance with a certain country, you are in that alliance with that country and you can't break alliance unless you break the treaty. So you have to create a separate character to do play no, somewhere no, else. No. no, what I had done. No, you can be in any alliance and it, it just happens that certain countries tend to align together because they all speak the same language. And the translation in chat sucks. Donkey balls. Right. Okay. Um, so 
BU happens to be pretty international. Um, we have a guy over there, Zap, whom I adore. He's so funny. He's from Egypt. We have um, several from, we just have them from all kinds of different countries. Drop okay. Bear, the one that's with me at the OCP is, well, BU4, is um, from Australia. Okay. We have several Americans. We have Filipinos. We have a gentleman that is from uh, Thailand that's in our little alliance. Um, a girl from Alaska. I mean, not that it's a foreign country, but it is just. We have a girl from Alaska. We've got people from South Carolina, all of uh, England. Um, okay, okay, so international. Very. Okay. Um, so, but you so great. can't really survive on your own. You well, need to be well, in the lion. What about Northern Ireland? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know Ireland. that. There's I'm a border gonna... for that. Um... <laughs> what about the Isle of Man? No, oh, Greg, what do you mean? What, what, you've to, <laughs> what you've got you can't call Dale of Man any longer <laughs> what you've got to understand is that these alliances that Nicole's talking about they're not it they're not part of the game this is right. this is the most politically and um what's the word uh, diplomatic game I've right. seen in a long time this is all going in the background so okay. there's, a, yeah. right. there's a, the OC podcast plan or alliance as you call it is physically or geographically located next to another alliance. And all these conversations are taking place in chat offline. Right, okay. So uh, Nicole's uh, doing all the diplomacy. It's like okay. United Nations. So, so I get that. I guess what I'm failing to understand, and, and I'm still not understanding it, is why you would need to have multiple characters if one character can play wherever. Because my second character is now the leader of the OCP Alliance, and I'm working in the Big Brother Alliance as well. That way, so you, there's cross yeah, conversation. You, you can't have the same. So one person, one account, cannot be in two alliances at the same time. That's what I needed to yeah. hear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now I understand. That's, yes. Okay. So yes. I also formally request that you change the OCP uh, logo, uh, and it should reference something about making video games great again. Um, well, <laughs> I would love to be able to do that for you, but it costs 500 gems to change any damn thing in there, including uh, our name. We, we need to talk to Kim, then. My understanding is she has a lot of gems. <laughs> Yeah. So Robin's obviously this. run out of gems, yes. judging by the uh, the video stream at the moment. He's obviously not interested in rise of civilizations. No, 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 not no, at all. I've, I've, no, no, no uh, all right. Uh, so, anything else, Nicole, outside of rise of civilizations? I know that has been like the game. It has been the game because I've met a lot of good people in that game. Uh, I mean, and there's nothing people. wrong with that. There's nothing wrong yeah, with I've that. I've friended a few people. We. We actually use Discord. Don't tell Shh, Mark. Don't tell anybody. I know. We uh, we all get along. We all chat. They're really a good group of people from both alliances. Um, so we are really a big happy family. So I think it's broadened our podcast community mm -hmm. by uh, and by aligning with these guys. And they've a lot of them listen to the show now. So excellent, excellent. Thank you to them for listening because. Yes. Thank you, okay. thank you for listening. Yeah, sorry. It's been a lot of fun. They're good guys, and they and they make this extra fun. Yeah, it's a like very good game. Yeah. Gary was looking very young with long hair for a moment. Uh, like a little, yes, he was very yes. seaman, feminine, yeah. feminine. <laughs> oh my god, I can't even <laughs> talk anymore. It's okay. I'm I've met so him in person. Tired. He is a bit feminine. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Gary. Gary Welcome back. Doesn't get any pizza ever. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. It's getting late here, so there's there's things. Dinner has got to be made and stuff, so I'm running around. All right. My kids so, were on camera. Oh, yeah, this is, oh my uh, daughter yeah, was. Yeah. Let me guess. Okay. Uh, the phone call was made to Domino's for delivery. <laughs> no, no. no <laughs> making uh, <laughs> some nice chicken breasts tonight, some sweet potatoes. You know, we're rocking. Right. Yeah, okay. Let's set the lid off the uh, the pack before we put them in the oven. You know. Let's get to <laughs> it. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's push forward. I know Gary has a, a hard stop. I'd love to be able to get us to the point of the quiz, which is just around the corner. So let's let's talk about Red Dead Redemption 2. 
Uh, we need to talk about that. That is the game I have been playing. That is the game I know Phil now has been playing. Yep. It's the game Robin should have been playing. And quite honestly, it's a game everybody should be playing. Go figure. Yes. Don't uh, make me buy this because I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, th- there are games that come along in, in a, a, a generation of a console and, and they stand out. They, you know, GTA five was a game that stood out, you know, it, 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 it I think really, um, at the beginning of this generation of consoles, it, it kind of hit its stride because of all of the online play stuff came in, but it really got its start on the 360 and the PS3, uh, Red Dead Redemption two is that kind of game where it, just uh, you talk about a game that um, borders being perfect, and to me that is Red Dead Redemption Two. Uh, yeah. I am I am blown away at the level of detail, not just in the graphics in terms of uh, you know how they they uh, represent the world, but also the detail of how they represent the world. Um, just all the different animations that they've put into this game for different things that you do. Um, it is incredible. It is. And I have to say, it's one of those games that you have to slow down. It's quite a change. I haven't played the first one in quite a, quite a while. And it is quite a, a tempo change from normal games. And I think a lot of people yeah. who haven't played the first one are struggling quite a bit. It is a slow game. You know, it yeah, is that, that is, the that pace... Is to talk about yeah yeah the pace is very slow and a lot of people haven't played the first one aren't used to it so it's um yeah i i think it's amazing it's the quality i'm playing on the x and we were talking earlier greg on um on social media about the number of people we're seeing who are picking up xbox one x's purely because of this game yeah i i i I have to say, I didn't think it was necessarily going to be a hardware mover, but I have seen a number of people. And granted, this is anecdotal. It's you know our circle of friends, so maybe the the uptick of the Xbox One X is higher in that in that social circle. But I mean, just this past week, I think I saw four different people posting pictures of having an Xbox One X on the front seat of their car or, or coming home and saying, "Look yeah, what I brought home yeah, with me." Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think it does and, any harm with like some digital foundry, Phil. Just waxing lyrical about it. Yeah, about, um, I was watching right. that on the background today, of, of them, and they were saying like, "Oh, this is the best footage is coming off the X." So, um, yeah. Well, what do you think? Yeah. It's yeah. I and mean, just going back to this, the pace of the game, actually, RCGC in the chat is just saying she didn't play the first one and she was getting quite, you know, kind of bored with it. Stick with it. Um, it's. It's going to be fantastic. I mean, I'm a couple of hours in, not very far. Um, I've gone on my first hunting trip, which was an experience in itself, um, yes. without giving anything away. And it's, yeah, the pace, the story. Um, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's worth, I think it's going to be worth sticking around. If it's anything like the first one, it'll be worth sticking, sticking around and, you know, putting the hours in. Yeah, uh, I mean, from from a story perspective, um, I will say, you know, I was disappointed when I first heard it was going to be a prequel. I still am disappointed it's a prequel. I really would have liked this game to have been um, a sequel to the original or just a different storyline altogether that kind of didn't cross with the first one. Um, But that being said, I still find what I'm playing compelling. it, it's interesting because you're you're seeing, you know, obviously the the gang pre John Marston. I didn't know how far they were going to go back. Yeah. It doesn't feel like they went all that far back. Um, so you know, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay away from spoilers, but uh, the game has some good crossovers, some good tie-ins. Um, I think that the the character development. And how it's happening, how I'm starting to see it unfold, is just, it's really good. Yeah. But it's subtle. Uh, it, it, as you mentioned, Phil, this is not a super fast-paced game. It's not going to be, uh, you know, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, a Call of Duty, big blockbuster action, you know, kind of game. It, it is going to be a methodical, you know, Western, spaghetti Western kind of 
road trip. Um, yeah. And, um, and one thing to one thing to watch out for as well. I, I don't know if it's a reference to anything, but the number of times when characters have said it's been a rough couple of weeks. Just yeah. listen out for it. They say it a couple of you know, quite a few times it's been a rough couple of weeks, which you know they refer to an event that right. happens just previously. Um, I don't know if we're going to see that event in the future. Red Dead certainly feels like something big happened, um, but they keep referring to it. So whether it's going to be right. DLC or something, I don't know. Yeah, again, not far enough in either, but I, I do wonder if that might be a flashback moment later on within the Could story. Be, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be at least how I think they'd handle that because, yeah, you don't know what's happened right before the game opens up. Um, but I will just say this from a graphical standpoint, just the little touches, um, the, the horses, I have never seen horses better animated in a game. They just react so naturally to walking in environments. Um, the snowfall. In this one moment, I was watching Snowfall hitting my horse, and uh, and and you could literally see it collecting on the shoulders of your yeah. character and the back of the horse as it was walking along, plodding through this you know intense snowstorm. Um, yeah, I, I cannot praise the game enough. Um, I, I I think it is fantastic, and it won me over um, instantly. I mean, within ten minutes, yeah. I was already singing the praise of this game, saying, "You know what? I think this is likely." Uh, if not my game of the year, at least going to be in the same conversation of a couple other games for my game of the year. Oh, yes, it's okay. same for me. I mean, it's it's not perfect. You know, it's not a perfect mm-hmm. game. There are some frustrations. You know, things like running your horse into someone else without another person running, riding a horse. So you have right. a head-on collision. Both of you go flying, and then they get up automatically and shoot you. Um, yeah, have, that was that was, that was them. yeah. So I ended up very quickly with a few hundred dollars bounty on my head um, <laughs> across across territories. Yeah, right, but right. Come on, yeah, like road rage. You know? It's mud. Yeah. That was it. Was it was horse rage? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. No, I I, I saw. Um, I don't know if it was you that posted that, but I saw somebody posted yeah. a video of of basically there's there's a cinematic mode by the way. So as you're playing the game and you're riding your horse. Um, you can hit basically. I think it's going to be the the back button on the PlayStation Four or the um, the view button on the the Xbox One controller. Yeah, you hold the it back down. Button. Yeah, you hold it down. It takes you into cinematic mode, which basically you can just press down and hold A, and you're going to automatically travel the course of of wherever you're going. But it, it takes this pulled back view, and and you can just admire the artistry of, of what they put out there. The problem is, every once in a while, things happen because of the open world nature of this game. Uh, and so, in, in this particular instance, uh, the rider was riding along. Another horse came uh, from the other direction. They collided head on, and, and the physics happened. The, the guys get thrown from the horses, and the other guy on the other horse got up shooting the the, uh, the rider of the other horse. I guess it's happened multiple times to multiple yeah. people, so it does happen. So you have to pay attention a little bit, I guess. It happens, uh, happens to me all the time. And one last thing for me, uh, a recommendation, get the app. There's a companion app yeah, for uh, tablets and phones. So the old previous apps have just been information. This one actually has a live map. So you can actually, and live map and status of your health and everything. So you can actually turn off all the on-screen HUDs and just have your um, tablet or phone display the map live. So the map uh. moves. You can actually uh, put um, waypoints onto the map. Um, you can check all your, um, so you've got your, your almanac and everything else. Um, and um, the map itself is superb. It's really, really good. Um, you just need something to prop it up and in that, front of you. Sorry, I but did have a look, but is it, would that be on the Google Store, the Google Play Store? or? Yes. Google. They have it on iOS. They also have it on iOS the Google Play Store. And, yeah. Red, so well, really one well thing I it. noted doesn't appear to work on tablets on the Google Store. It's just working what? with the smartphone. So I don't ah, know if that's nice. maybe my it's tablet's a little older or not. But yeah, it's, apparently it works it's not. on iPads. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's a really good app, and also the journal as well. There's a journal on there. It's probably in the game as well, as well. But it makes it a lot easier to read it on the actual tablet uh, or yeah. phone. 
Um, so yeah. well worth picking that up. Picking it up. Yep. Yep. Good. All right. Uh, so yeah, Red Dead Redemption Two. Uh, go go buy it. Just just do yeah. it, Gary. Do it. Come on. We'll, we'll see. When is well, the, I, uh, you know? Right. I, I want to really wait for it to come on PC. To be honest with you, middle of November. I think. I it just is. need it to be cheaper than it is. I middle of November for what? For the online. Oh okay. Yeah. I thought you were telling me PC was there, middle of November. No. <laughs> There are there there is no uh, online multiplayer right now. That is actually something to point out. I I was thrown off a little bit by that. Uh, yes, it's coming. It's coming. Um, they said mid- around the middle of November for the uh, for the beta for the online. You know, I am highly considering doing the old. I used to do this all the time for extra life. I would go to GameStop and buy discs and then return them with the seven day policy. <laughs> I've really thought about doing that. And if I really <laughs> like it, I keep it. And if not. You know, or if I'm, yeah. I want to get it later, I could just pick it up later or get it digital or something. Go for it. But see, no man. online multiplayer is good, too, we'll because see, we'll see all you have I don't to have PS Plus. Is, well, take, well, you don't have an Xbox, do you, Gary? Do you? He does. I'm not, he does. If I buy yeah. it, I'm going to buy it on the PlayStation. Oh, all right. Well, he say, can't, he can't for, buy it on PC. No, but for Extra Life, you can <laughs> take out your, your, uh, the Xbox Game Pass for a month, and then it'll give you all the games you want for Extra Life. Yeah. yeah, no, I have it. Actually, that's what I did to get Forza. <laughs> yes. ah, there you go. Yeah, it's a good thing. Cool. All okay. right. Can't wait to play. Uh, let's let us move on. Let's do a quiz. Ooh. All right, now everybody get settled. Get away from the windows. Now look. Good. It's time for the quiz. Uh, yeah, you know what? Oh, too bad. Tough. That's right. Tough. <laughs> All right. Uh, participating, by the way, this week we have Phil, literally, myself, with his two points, our tit, and Donkey Fan. I made sure to name everybody <laughs> appropriately. I'm ready. That's clever. That's clever. All right. I am ready as well. I'm not. Are you ready? I don't Nicole? know what happened to our. <laughs> I don't know where your little answers are. It's little answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nicole, the, the, the proper the proper response is my answers are oh, all boy, correct. You gotta admit that one. Fine. Uh. Oh, How's boy, that? You gotta admit that one. Fine. Stop it. Yes, stop. <laughs> Please, for the love of God, feel wrong. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Skim it. Holy crap on a cracker! Are we good now? Yes. Yeah, I think good. so. Today. All right. For Harry those wants. who are tuning in for the first time, mm-hmm. God help us. For those who are t- tuning in for the first time, uh, who said it best is a game of quotes. The quotes mainly come from video games, but can come from other related sources, including but not limited to movies, graphic novels, and fictional stories. Are you reading that? I will read the quotes. What? Are you reading that out? Are you reading that off a page? Or are you just making that shit up as you go? Can you Better? just... <laughs> Fuck off. Hmm. 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 So, hmm. Robin is now negative five points for being a smart ass. Get on with it. Yes! Do you know what time it is? Yeah. Hurry up. Yeah, it's time for you to shut up. So, uh, I'm going to read the quote. Give you the answer choices. Read the quote again. Give you the answer choices because you guys are that slow. What was, the middle, twice. What, was, what was the middle bit again? Sorry. And Stop it. I'll <laughs> ask you for your answers. Ready? I'm ignoring yes. Robin now. Yes, he's ignore minus him. Five points. All right. He's he's turned his camera off, so we can't see actually what he's drinking right now. But I have a feeling <laughs> a lot of whiskey is being consumed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question number, or quote number one. A hero need not speak. When he is gone, the world will speak for him. A hero need not speak. When he is gone, the world will speak for him. That's like me. Is that A? I I fart and leave the room. (laughs) Fuck off. Is that A, Master Chief? B, a Halo advertisement? Or C, Cortana? A, right. Master Chief, B, Halo Advertisement, or Advertisement, depending on who you are, or C, Cortana. 
I need your answers in three, two, one. Y'all are some slow ass typers. There we go. Uh, so I have three C's and a B. Mm. 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 Somebody got it right. <laughs> Somebody got it wrong. <laughs> 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 Yes? <laughs> Greg. Woohoo! Greg was a loser. I have awarded Greg the points. It is from a Halo advertisement. Oh, see Mr. Marketing. He got it right. He could sniff the marketers. Yes. You should ask a question like, how many sales did this thing have in 1922? <laughs> Remember Greg's quizzes with that shit? Oh. No, I'm not oh. me. <laughs> yes, thank you, Robin. Thank you. <laughs> uh, All right. Play each other nasty names. All right, number two, two. You couldn't shoot a fart out of your ass, out of your own ass. You couldn't shoot a fart out of your own ass. So, uh -huh. who said that best? A, John Martin <laughs> from RDR. B, Handsome Jack from Borderlands. Or an NPC from Titanfall. A is John Marston. B is Handsome Jack. And C is an NPC from Titanfall. Oh. What was D? I need your answers in three, two, one. It's typing, boys. Woo! Holy crap. How much have you had to drink, Robin? That was a little... <laughs> <laughs> life. All right, now we have three B's and a C. Wow. Mm. Y'all are doing pretty good. Mm. Except you got this mm. one wrong. Mm. All of you. Mm. That was Red oh. Dead? All right. Mm. It was John Marston. What? I thought it was too obvious. I thought it was too obvious. Yeah, That's what I thought. God, trying God. to give you guys an easy one. Y'all all four effed it up. I don't know. It's Chris. No <laughs> points awarded. No points. All right. This one is going to kill you guys. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, like it's like dangerous to our health or what? Um, anyway, <laughs> I fight for my lost freedom and my outraged daughters. I fight for my lost freedom and my outraged daughters. Oh, she's doing Is off. it A, Tomo Gozen, the beauty of the fallen rose, or B, Boudicca, the Celtic Rose, or C, Sarka, the Meat of Death. That's Every tough. single one of you will have to guess this because it's from Rise of Civilizations. Can you say it again? So Does it a matter? Is, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, sorry, the answers. Yeah, the sorry. answers. <laughs> Just say after three, okay, please. A is Tomogosen, B is Boudicca, or Boudicca, however you say her name, Bird and C it. is Sarka. I like Robin's answer. <laughs> so, is there a D all of the above no oh. I need your answers in three two one pure Pike. speculation come Pike. on say A come on come on say A <laughs> okay are y'all done no. yes <laughs> alright so I have A B and two C's and um, I'm going to award points, well, not to Robin. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. It's a good and start. And not to Greg or Gary. Oh, come on. Come on, man. I mean, Phil gets no. it. Phil All gets right. points. <laughs> Very good. I remember my Latin. Hmm. That's hmm. Phil. Hmm. 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 So, where we're at? now is Kim is still in the lead with 15 points Greg now has um, this is not lies Greg now has 8 Who oh has no two? I now have 9 or 9 sorry 9 and don't be cheating me out of my points oh suck it oh my god you are such a bitch some days <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm tired <laughs> I like Phil already changed his Phil has 3 oh my god Phil's on it Bill is yep. on it because now he's not mm. with, you know, Gary, Rich, and they're two points. 
Hey, for the times I've been on, I think two's not too shabby. You've been yeah. on twice. Uh, Self praise indeed. <laughs> you got a point each time. Yeah. Not too shabby. Yeah, that's too shabby. You I get very it. Very much love it. <laughs> Moving on. Right. Well done, Nicole. Well done. No, well right. done, you guys. Here is the fucking news. Just going to keep moving along. Really not a lot of news this week. There was literally one story I found, which was uh, mouse support now available in the Xbox One preview program. So mouse keyboard coming. Uh, they have limited it to Warframe for now. So that is in the, the beta program right now. So you can, uh, if you are in the alpha, alpha ring or the beta ring, I believe it's, it's now out as well, that you can try mouse and keyboard support uh, in the game Warframe. It looks like it's doing the same thing uh, that uh, Google Stream is doing, which is you plug in a controller, and depending on which device you're using, it will automatically sense it and switch over to it. So if you have a mouse and keyboard and a controller, you know, both active, you, you jiggle your mouse, it's going to pull up the mouse and keyboard settings and, and, and use that. If you twitch your controller, you like that, huh, huh, huh? Uh, it's going to go to the controller setting. Uh, you know, it would sound Thank hot if Nicole said much. it, but not Love you. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, but yeah, so uh, I, I think the important thing to note is they're, they're still saying that this feature is going to be up to the developers to uh, to implement. So, you know, I think those that are fearful of, you know, all the mouse and keyboard players coming over, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I think you're still going to see developers being very cautious with implementing uh, this kind of control scheme on, say, shooters, for example. I think you're going to still have the option to opt out of those kind of uh, games if you know, and just play with other people on a gamepad. Um, but I think it's going to be good for games like, you know, Civilization or um, you know, Gears uh, Tactics. That's uh, you know on the horizon. I think those are going to be games that currently are being built for PC and and. Because they have mouse and keyboard support, they now can come to console. Maybe they'll improve uh, those shitty games like XCOM as well. Listen, just Ouch. because <laughs> you liked the worst game ever, Aliens Colonial Marines, uh, don't try and shit on my game, which was a fantastic masterpiece. This is not good for <clears throat> image. Uh, all right, but I want to talk about something else uh, real quick. I want to open up a little discussion. Um, so Rockstar, they have been in the news, not just because of the fantastic game they just released, but also uh, about a week and a half, two weeks back, they had one of their executives was talking about how he and the, kind of his small team on, I think it was the story team, uh, were putting in 100 plus hour work weeks to try and get you know through the, the final crunch of the game. And it set off this big firestorm of people talking about, you know, how, how can they be getting away with this? And they're pushing their employees too hard. And, you know, talking about the, the gaming crunch being a bad thing. So I have my views on this. Um, but I wanted to kind of throw this out there. I mean, do we think this is really a problem? Do we think this is an industry issue? Do we think this is maybe being blown out of proportion? Fuck them. So I want to just kind of throw this around. They're making loads of money over time. It's fantastic. Well, see, now there's a question to ask. Are they really making overtime? Because I would venture to say that probably 90% of the people that are working within Rockstar are probably salaried, not being paid hourly. So they're not getting overtime. Well, maybe they're just um, shagging, shagging in, the, in the broom closet or something like out there. I mean, you know, maybe they've got no homes to go to, you know? Maybe they don't like their families. Maybe they're just happy to be in work. You know, it, it's been blown out of all proportion. You know, I think all people should work at least 100 hours per week. Definitely. <laughs> paid or unpaid. I really honestly... Oh my God, you know, go drink more whiskey. And do you know what? This, this, <laughs> this, this, I haven't had any whiskey at all. And this fantastic game is out. You know, and it's worth 100 hours per week. They should be happy to work for 100 hours per week. Uh, do you know what? It's a great game. <clears throat> it's all matches. Seriously? Uh, they could give Phil a couple of hours. That would be nice. Yeah. This has been, <laughs> yeah. This has, this has been a crunch. So I, I and I think this happens with a lot of projects. I've been involved in projects like this yeah. that you had mm -hmm. to put in some hard hours towards the end. I'm quite sure for three years they weren't working 100 hour weeks, and yeah. it's been maybe blown a little bit out of proportion. Plus, it was confirmed rightly or wrongly that it was the story team. I'm sure other people were involved, but do you know what? 
Yeah, it's Rockstar. They've worked on Red Dead Redemption 2 on their CV and they've seen it through. They'll they'll go places. So, yeah. It's terrible if people are away from their families. And it'll be terrible if they're bullied into doing it or feel pressured right. into do it, doing it. But that's business. They had yeah. deadlines and they had to get them done. So blame the project managers for not allocating proper time. That's it. I'm sorry. I am not a liberal. No, no. I, 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 I don't disagree with what you're saying, Robin. I think part of, um, you know, part of this is maybe perception. Um, you know, a lot of people in, in gaming, in terms of games enthusiasts, um, you know, I would venture to say a, a good majority of people that are, are playing games are not necessarily salaried. Um, uh, you know, you have a lot of people that are working hourly uh, and in their perception, when they're hearing somebody saying they had to put in 100 hours, they're they're looking at it from their perspective of, you know, uh, being, you know, paid hourly and then hearing about them not getting paid for all this overtime they're putting in that that has to feel like kind of crazy. Hmm. Um, but again, I, I, I don't think the communication of the story and the situation of these employees is being um, portrayed properly because I would venture to say the guy that was telling us he was doing a hundred plus hours a week, I'm sure he's wait, making well over a hundred grand a year, uh, being the level of position he was in. Um, I'm sure he's more than happy to put in the hours he's doing. I don't know. The sad thing about it is as well, Greg is right now the game has launched and I would say mm -hmm. a good third of that team is now gone by bite. I'm quite sure that rockstar mm -hmm. bring in temporary guys to do Mick, Mick leaves or rocks or you know, and there's a lot of those guys are not required any longer so they'll be off to the, the next subby job that they have to do so and I think that's part of the industry as well so I, yeah. I think I think we from the outside we're all going shock horror but I, I don't know I, I, when you work on private projects sometimes it, it happens so and we all think we all think the worst of people all thinking about the worst so, so I'm gonna do, kind of Go to you, Nicole, with with a little bit different twist here. Um, it, yep, yep, I'm coming to you. Um, okay, we we know the hour situation, but one of the other things I, I heard, which I I don't know how to feel about this, is that um, a number of employees that didn't finish the project, they were working on Rockstar, but they never were actually there for the completion of the game. Um, apparently, their names are not in the credits. Oh, that sucks. So yeah, so I mean, I, 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 I mean, should they be in the credits? Well, here's my thing on that. Whatever small part anybody plays in a movie, they'll have a whole list of you know people that were still credited for their small bit, whether they were actually edited out later or not. Mm -hmm. So in, you know looking at it in that perspective i would um think that those people should be credited for their small amount of work whether it was you know they made it only did a quarter of the project a half of the project three eighths 50 i don't care um one eighteenth of the project they were still there for part of that project and should have their name on it um maybe there should be a minimum you know you have to work at, you know out of 600 hours that we do for this game in order to be credited and it should be somewhere in the contract that they sign you have to work this many hours or i mean there's other ways to look to do it where the but i don't know it just kind of sucks if you put your name your heart and soul into something for a little bit because it is artistic mm -hmm. and so being an artist part of me is going to go into whatever project i'm doing and I think I should get the accolades for that just because I don't want, you know, anybody running naked down the street going, hey, look what she did. Please stay dressed. Because um, that would be lovely if you stayed dressed. I don't need encouragement. But just a nice little pat on the back <laughs> saying, hey, you know, we know that you help with this and we appreciate it. It would be nice. So yeah. that, that's that's just my two cents. Is there, is there something behind you know, because it, it doesn't, the credits will run for about 10 minutes anyway. So there must be a reason why they haven't put them in the credits. So they have to pay people extra 
perhaps to actually have their names in the credits because they're they're then officially part of the project. That's an interesting that, question. Adding yeah. adding a few names to the you know the already massive list of people isn't going to cost any more. There's not going to be any any extra development in it. So there's got to be a financial reason why they've cut them out. Yeah, well, maybe it was a not an in-house thing. It was a subcontracting thing that they were, were played for bulk work. So maybe there was thirty or forty guys that worked on the stones at the side of the road that never came near Rockstar, and they just you know maybe and it was just a that company was paid for it. And they maybe there's a credit for the company, not for all the people. I I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is it is a very curious thing. I do agree with Nicole, though. I think if if you put time into the game, even if it's a small amount, uh, there there should be a section. Maybe it could just be you know thanks to you know these individuals who uh, you know uh, you know were early collaborators on the game or something. I don't know. However you want yeah, to word it, but anything. just yeah. you know that you know they did make a minor contribution. You know, minor, you can even list it as minor contributors. It Minor contributors that are not getting bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> to those who will, yes. It's just, I don't know. That that would upset me if I had worked on it and yeah. didn't see my name up there. I would like the facts. Just We're, we're making lots yeah. of assumptions here, so I would like the facts. No, no, agreed, agreed. It, it feels petty on the surface. I think Phil raises a great question to be asked, that maybe there is something underneath that... You know, it has financial implica- implications. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that was it. That just wanted to kind of throw that around to everybody. Hmm. Okay. Uh, cool. It seems like we're all of like minds. Uh, you can work all the hours you want if you are passionate for it. And I mean, it's no reason to think they're not making good money. And uh, give the people the credit they deserve. Speaking of credit they deserve, Gary, I know we're right up against it for you. So I want you to do this, Gary. Tight. I Let's want go. you to read off our new releases for the week coming up. You gotta find that in the notes. I know you're not I there see yet. It. All right. And then once you're there, read away. Go so for if it. you guys fucked with the words here, I have no idea any of these games. We did not. The second one. So no, here I we go because I'm not gonna games. pronounce it. Call of Cthulhu. Original video game. Xbox One and the PC October 30th. Diablo 3. I know that. uh, Eternal Collection on the Switch. November 2nd. Taiko no Tachusan. Drum and Fun. Switch. November 2nd. Also on the PS4. Drum Session. November 2nd. That is it on new releases for October 27th through November 3rd. Well done, Gary. Well done. Oh, yeah. uh, yes. For for those that did not understand Gary's first enunciation, uh, it was Call of Cthulhu. That, that is who the hell spells Cthulhu like that? I don't know. Cthulhu. Hey guys. Hi. Yes. Hi. Um, so for whatever reason, my um, PC has been. <laughs> it's gonna die. So okay. <laughs> Maybe because of the three-hour podcast we've had. It's it's a little awesome. white flag has appeared at the top of the screen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, play dates on Wednesday night. We will be doing Forza Convoy uh, again because there's no Red Dead Redemption multiplayer yet. Uh, so, Wednesday night, 9 p.m. UK. Adjust your clocks accordingly. Re- Rise of Civilizations for the OC Pod Alliance is still going. So, join in and play every day. And, of course, don't forget the Forza Horizon Club on uh, OC, OC PC which is the Overseas Connection podcast. So OCPC as our club on Forza Horizon 4. Please join in. Uh, I'll just carry on. Yes. Victory Achieved. Victory Achieved. Uh, Victory Achieved is the thing that you do when you finish a game to the credits and you don't see your mate there and he's crying in the corner and his pint. I was supposed to be on the credits. So what this you do is, is you take what a, you do. No, so you take a photograph of yourself with those credits without your mate's name on the background and you tweet that off to at OC underscore podcast with a hashtag victory achieved and you we enter you into a draw for twenty dollars or fifteen pounds, which you could you could give to your friend that doesn't in the credits that didn't get paid for that bit. So you can donate that $20 to him. And uh, every three months we make a draw and people win this money. And this week the people that finished games were Gunslinger, Tom Harding. He finished the uh, Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4, which is a fantastic game. And, of course, Mr. Shannon in, in, 
infected psych. <laughs> Easy for you to say. By the way, never give me shit for saying somebody's name wrong ever, ever, ever again. Mr. Sean, infected, infected psych. So he finished to call to Tacoma. I need drink. That's what's wrong. I have not any drink. Drink is so, good. So, um, uh, you guys, thank you very much for playing. Play along. Finish your games. Send in your tweets. Win money. Thank you very much. And for that, you get this. You all have a victory is achieved. Victory is achieved. You have one. A victory is achieved. Oh. Wow. Yes. And also, if you've gotten this far in the podcast, you are now getting the award winning closing notes. Uh, let's wrap this one up. Hey, uh, we really appreciate everybody mm. sticking out with us. Mm. I hate the sound effects. Everybody sticking out with us this week. Uh, we really do appreciate it. I know wow. we had the technical hiccup to begin with. But what. How much fun would this podcast be without the technical hiccups, Fuck, be right? fucking awesome, and I'm a <laughs> I know. It would be great. Uh, well, here's here's the good news for you, folks. If you're listening next week, Mark will be back. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Fuck you. Seriously. <laughs> uh, but, hey, if you want to be part of the conversation, uh, twitch.tv forward slash OC podcast, mixer.com forward slash OC podcast, YouTube dot com forward slash overseas connection podcast starting somewhere in the neighborhood of 9 p.m in the uk 1 p.m on the west coast 4 p.m on the east coast 6 p.m on easter island and 7 a.m in australia yes that's right 7 a.m in australia normally normally again we can't promise we will start on time we can't promise we will finish on time we can't promise really anything other than we will make an effort uh, you can find us on iTunes, iTunes or Stitcher, <laughs> anywhere you want to give us a review. Go out, give us a review. We'd love to hear your feedback on the podcast. Likely it uh, might not be the most positive right about now, but, you know, hey, we appreciate it nonetheless. Uh, we've got social clubs. If you want to be part of a social club because you're feeling the need to be around other like-minded gamers, go check out OC Podcast Club on Xbox One, OC Podcast Community on PS4. OC Podcast Group on Steam. Nobody plays PC games. Uh, OC Podcast Server on Discord. <clears throat> There's Discord stuff going on there. Gary, do you have a problem with your throat there? No, no, everything's mm-hmm. fine. PC. Okay, just double check. Where's Webster when I need him? <laughs> he skipped the show. Smart man. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> we, want to, we want you to listen to this now. You like us. We like you. See where I'm going with this? Follow us on Twitter at OC underscore podcast. Check us out on Facebook, fb.ocpod.com, or email us, podcast at ocpod.com. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, dear. (laughs) All right. I'm up and giggles. Yes. (laughs) Yes, you are. All right, shout outs. Let's 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 wrap this one up and put a bow on it. Nicole, start us off with some shout outs. All right. So first of all, I'd like to thank all of our lovely chatters in the chat box. Uh Politzai, RCDC, Baron von Glauer, Apricot Droop Fruit. I had to separate that out so I wouldn't mess it up. <laughs> Commander Root, Tech uh Tensity Four, Gunslinger nineteen eighty three, skinny seahorse. Low cool, and then there was a couple of us in there, and we don't count, so it's all good. <laughs> Damn! Um, shout out to you guys; it's always a lot of fun, and I know we give each other a hard time, but we really are like a huge family and do like to mess around with each other. Ooh! So that makes it lots and lots of fun. And my dog just stuck a paw down my shirt. Awesome! Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love we're, we're, video. We're, we're, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you can email me at nicole at ocpod.com. Find me on Twitter at OC underscore Amaryllis on, yeah, Twitter. Uh, Amaryllis on PlayStation 4. I'm really tired, guys. Amaranth on the Xbox. Um, another shout out to my dad who celebrated his 75th yesterday. We had a really great time. And um, to my 
Blue Union family on um, Rise of Civilizations. So, um, Gary, you go. Perfect timing. The doorbell rang. The dog is barking. Uh, <laughs> why don't somebody else go? <laughs> Phil, you go. I'll come back. I'll go. I'll go. Um, thanks to you guys, as, uh, as always. Uh, special shout out to Jenny, Mark's uh, lady wife. Uh, hoping that um, she gets better soon. Yes. Uh, congratulations to Kim and her family for the new addition to the new uh, little addition to the family. Hopefully, uh, it's not part of um, Kim's kindergarten that she's setting up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can join you can join myself and uh, the other guys on Xbox. My uh, game tag is Filthy. It's P H one L T H E E E. And back to Gary. I'll back? take it off mute. I'll try that first. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's quiet here again. Um, yeah, if you're looking for me anywhere, I am the real Defoe, and that is everywhere. Xbox, PlayStation, PC, Twitter, whatever. Uh, look me up. Look for me next Saturday, Extra Life. I'm looking for friends to keep me up. I'll probably be in the Discord channel um, to talk a, if you want. He needs it's a the fluffer. future friends to keep you up. <laughs> he needs a fluffer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I'm on the other the, other the coast. Please. Yep. <laughs> uh, do you know what your wife is for? Nah. Let's not yeah. go there. Um, <laughs> yeah. We now know why the dog was barking and complaining. Yes, we all complain here. Um, yeah, but Extra Life, I can't wait one week away. And real quick, I reached – so I was setting up Extra Life. I reached out to friend of the show, Fraser Moore, and uh, – He's apparently Thank doing the Game you Punchers very again. Much. Love it. There he is. There, the Game Punchers are back. They've done two episodes, so I wanted to give them a shout out. I had no idea that they were out doing some shows again, so it's nice to hear them back on the podcast scene. Didn't even Go know they stopped out. making them. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I knew they stopped. I didn't know they started. I'm not sure they know they've started. <laughs> <laughs> I think they forgot again. I think they were at the yellow the, uh... concert. <laughs> What was that other show he did? Uh, the uh, the angry people, or whatever it was. They would just get on. They did one show out of Takes nowhere. One to I, no know, one. I don't know. Can't remember, but uh, maybe they'll do another show. They did two in a row, and now it seems they may have stopped again. It's kind of like me. Yep. <laughs> so thank you very oh. much. Thanks for listening. I will throw it over to Robin. Yeah. Um. All the extra lifers, good luck next weekend or whenever you're doing your your charity drive. Um, we'll be there to support you in every way we can. Uh, remember, uh, Wednesday evening, 9 p.m. UK, we'll be online playing gaming, th most likely Forza Horizon 4. Um, I would also like to shout out Mark and Jenny. So, uh, yeah, I hope Jenny's feeling better soon. And Mark, you get back here. Funny, Skype really behaved itself after we had several major crashes. And actually, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for that it's actually been okay it's actually we came back from from death um there was a moment there that i thought it was gonna go nowhere so yes uh yeah yeah so thanks for bearing with us at the beginning of the show um we'll forget that we'll put that in the in the, in the archives somewhere i think that the beginning of that bit so yeah anyway good night thank you greg all right, Robin, uh, thank you for sticking it out. Uh, I know the beginning of the show was uh, it was nerve wracking, to say the least. Uh, a big shout out to Mark and Jenny. Uh, Jenny, for the record, if you want time off and just to get a little vacation from Mark, you don't have to go to the hospital for this. So stop doing that. Uh, get well. Uh, Aunt Tim, congratulations. Uh, lovely little guy. So uh, congratulations on that. Uh, let's see here. I want to shout out all the listeners. Thank you for sticking out with us. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Uh, we have a lot of fun on this podcast. We are, uh, you know, a very close family and, uh, the community makes it even better. So, uh, you know, huge shout out to you. And, uh, I think my final shout out will be Mark, come back, please. Um, Somebody but yeah, no. kiss me. Uh, extra life next weekend. Uh, support it however you can, whether it's uh, giving a donation, uh, helping one of us stay awake while we're playing a game. Uh, just just do it. Be there uh, in whatever fashion you can. We do appreciate it. It's a great cause. And on that note, we're done. Let's wrap this up. up. 
with a little music. Thank you for listening to the Overseas Connection podcast. Just a little music, not a lot. Just, just, just a, a smidge yeah. of I'm music. Play music. From me. <laughs> See you same time next week. <laughs>